I'm Zoe Foster Blake, founder of GoTo. And I'm Kiara, I'm the brand education lead here at GoTo. We've invited the Makerversity team into our lab, in our office, right here, in Sydney. In Sydney. So if you've ever been curious about how we formulate our products, how we test and prove their effectiveness, strap on in, because we're gonna take you through. skincare world at the moment is so cluttered and confusing and honestly a bit overwhelming. Mm. Uh, there's a new brand, a new product, a new ingredient all the time. So why did you start a brand? Why did you start GoTo? What, what makes it sparkle? Great question. So 12 years ago when I started the brand, I was a beauty editor and I'd written a book about beauty and I felt confident that there was something missing for a very simple brand. There is a lot of research that has gone into giving too much choice is crippling and paralyzing and people just back away. So I wanted to offer a range that was super duper simple that used the most proven and effective ingredients that you could reach for. They become your go-to because they're trustworthy, reliable, and they did the job. I think now more than ever, that simplicity really stands out because if you are feeling overwhelmed by skincare, whether you're just starting out or whether you're very sophisticated and you just want to get back to basics but you want the stuff that works, that's, that's what we can do best. Mm -hmm. So I think we're in an age now where people are very well informed about skincare. They know the ingredients to look for, they look at the inky list, they cross-reference, they read reviews and that's fantastic because we love education here at GoTo. However, you can trust us. We have the lab and the formulators and we have put together these formulations to make sure that you are getting those ingredients and you're getting those effects but without having to do all the work. Like let, let us do that for you. And then what we also like to do is get independent clinical trials to make sure that everything we're using is really proven and you can believe us when you say this is going to reduce the appearance of lines or this is going to boost your hydration and those sorts of things. We understand that you want the education, the stats, the ingredients and we're going to give it to you. But also, if you're not that kind of person and you just want to relax and know that we got you, well, we got you. So when you say uh, our formulators, you actually mean like our yeah. Uh, formulators yeah. here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think sometimes we forget that um, a lot of brands may not have in-house formulators working with them full time. This is our lab here in Sydney. These are the peach lab coats. And we have three in-house formulators. We also have QA, quality assurance, and regulatory staff because we like to start all of our NPD in this very building and take it from there. So it's fantastic because we have a really close, obviously one-on-one -on -one relationship with these people and we can see the entire R&D development process from start to finish. So what is, what is the standard for a go-to product? What must it have? I would say the first word that comes to mind is that it has to work. So effectiveness is key and that's going to inform which ingredients we use and how strong and in what order and how. Also we look to safety and gentleness. We have built a very privileged position of being a brand that people can turn to when they have sensitive skin or tricky skin and we really always try and make everything we do accessible not just for people who love vitamin C but people who love vitamin C but also might have skin that gets a bit annoyed by vitamin C. We also really look at cosmetic elegance so how it feels on the skin, how it smells, if it smells for example with SPF if you don't make something that feels good and Why looks good on? under makeup, nobody's going to wear that. So I would say we sort of hit those beats and we make sure that the whole package is obviously something that's really um, useful because we're not in the game to just make a product because everybody else is doing it or to bounce off a trend. We want to make sure that it fits into our world of being simple, effective and trustworthy. So GoTo doesn't just release products for the sake of releasing a product. No. It also takes a really long time <laughs> from start to finish. Yes. So you've got to know that it's exactly what you want. So what, yes. what comes first? Is it something that's missing for you in your routine? Is it something that people are asking you for? Where does it start for you? Yeah, great question. And all of those are true. So in the early days, I was 100% going off what I wanted and thought, oh, I would really love GoTo to make this all-purpose moisturizer that you could wear at night, through the day, under makeup, and on a plane. And that was very useful face cream for example. 
As time has gone on, it's less about me wanting to fulfill what I want to use because we've done it. We've got a much broader audience and it's that realisation of uh, just because I don't have oily skin doesn't mean we shouldn't cater to the many, many thousands of people who do. So we have, with a big team and with an incredible community, we have fleshed out our product offering to be a lot more accessible for a lot more people. We listen to customers. They have informed some of the biggest moves in our whole company, whether that be packaging or sustainability. I never wanted to launch an eye cream, for example, because I don't believe in them, but there was so much demand that we had to take it seriously. And for me, it was like, fine, we'll do it, but it has to really work. So we ended up with a vitamin A eye serum, which is a very different thing to an eye cream. So there's a combination. There's us looking at what we've got so far and seeing what's missing and how we can cater to more people with more skin needs different age demographics, different skin types, things that I wish we could make or we could put a cool riff on it. Some things I think are a great idea and then make an expensive decision not to do it. For example, Transformazing, which is our best-selling sheet mask. It was a cream mask to begin with and then I realised that that wasn't actually what I was looking for, so we changed and thank God we did. So I, I think we have this idea of strong views loosely held in terms of like we know what we do and what we are, but we're not going to follow trends necessarily. It has yeah. to always be really useful and, and fit enduring timeless skin need. Zoe, you yes. brought up decrease, which I happen to have just here. Wow. <laughs> um, I'd love to just do a deep dive on decrease yeah. because like you said, it's one that changed your mind mm. and that our formulators change your mind on. So how, how did they do it? They're brilliant. I just knew that if we were going to do an eye serum, it had to have vitamin A in it. And of course the default is retinol. Now that's a tricky one when you have a brand that prides itself on being available to everybody and bringing people into ingredients perhaps they couldn't use previously or were too scared to try because that's the way we like to formulate so that everybody can use these actives. The team in this very lab came back with retinol, which I didn't actually know much about. And retinol is better and faster at doing what it needs to do and it's science, but it's one less conversion mm -hmm. step than retinol to get to retinoic acid and it's more easily tolerated by more skins. So that was the first big tick. Then we wanted to put peptides in there for the lifting and firming, and we have niacinamide and mushroom extract to make it really plump and hydrated as well. That is a pretty stunning formula by any, any standard, and it's what you would see in any of the best-in-class eye serums from any brand. So when you're presented with that and you go, all right, this is actually gonna work, you've got the clinical trials to back it up, you've got the results, I don't know what would make me say no to that. Mm. So that's what I talk about when I say strong views loosely held because if your pillars are effectiveness, simplicity and being trustworthy, then that 100% delivers. Exciting. Yes. yes. Aren't you excited about it? No, they are exciting <laughs> because it's the proof. We all yeah. want proof. You don't want to be yelling on a box going, it really works mm. and getting, you know, user generated testimonials are really helpful. People can see that. But when you've got actual independent yeah. trials, that show that, you know, for example, with decrease, it's a 50% reduction in crow's mm -hmm. feet. That's really important. And I think consumers, now that they're so educated and so judicious in how they spend their money, um, they're just gonna look for those results. Yeah. And serums versus creams, what, what, what are they? What is okay. the difference? I was once told that the difference between a serum and a cream or a moisturizer is like, the serum is a shot of tequila and the cream is a glass of wine. So your serums, if you think about even your face serums compared to your face creams, they are usually active, they're concentrated, they're usually thin, so they can get in faster and do more work quicker. Mm -hmm. And they're targeted, so they create, well, they're looking for something to specifically target, whether that's pigmentation or fine lines. So when you're talking about an eye cream, for the most part, I think eye creams, without vitamin A of course, because they do exist, but your classic hydrating eye cream is just a tiny tub of moisturizer. And if you took your actual face cream up to that, that you would get those same hydrating results. An eye serum, however, with vitamin A and those peptides for lifting and firming are actually gonna do something on that highly expression-y area around your eyes. And if you're looking to soften and plump up those lines, then this is the gold standard of what you would wanna be using there. And you know it's super targeted, super active, super concentrated. And usually you're happier after tequila than wine. <laughs> <laughs> For a minute. How do you know when a product is good to go, gets a tick on the shelf? That's a very exciting moment, but you have to earn it. So we start here in the lab with lab samples and we perfect and perfect and go through many, many iterations until we in the office and the inner circle among 
go to and friends and family are feeling pretty good about it. And when we say that, we're talking about how it feels, how it smells, how it plays well with other products and it allows you to do your layering. And of course, meanwhile, all the clinical stuff's happening in the background to make sure that the efficacy is there. It's very hard to get that in a couple of uses. Once we feel really happy with that, we'll probably start getting to two or three samples and then we'll do a bigger batch and then we'll really sort of go for it. There have been some incredible numbers that have come in with these products. I remember the hand cream was one of the hardest ones to get right. And How, we, many? How many? Oh my god, it was up in the 40s or 50s. I mean I love it by the way, if you haven't tried Super Handy, best hand cream out there. Highly underrated. Um, but things like SPF, I mean we were in the hundreds for sure, mm -hmm. just getting it perfect because there's a lot that goes into an SPF. So yeah, it's never like well, sometimes it is that beautiful aha moment, but there's usually a bit of a committee deciding and, you know, but the fragrance bit's really fine. You get to try the different smells yeah. and make sure it works. And you think about what is this, what's this moment the person's using it? Are they in the shower? Are they expecting like a fresh, like the juicy gel, it had to feel fresh and yeah. hydrating. So you have to think about the fragrance in that sense. And everyone in the office smells and yeah, puts in their votes. Yeah, they yeah. do. They take it home and they use it. Mm -hmm. And then with something like SPF, so much of that is about how does it dry down? What does it look like under your makeup? And those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Are there any products that didn't quite make it or similarly ones that you've gone, actually, we can do this? Yes, yes. Better? I feel proud that we don't often invest a lot of time and money and thought into products that don't get up. We have parked a few and come back to them. One of them is the BHA toner from years ago that we then did in a stable of beautiful exfoliants. So it's now the clarifying exfoliant. And I think sometimes you just gotta let things rest for a minute until you really nail it. Because if you feel like you've really nailed it, the momentum is there and you just crunch through and you want it out as soon as possible. We always wanna make sure that everything we're offering is, is best in class and using the latest ingredients and tech, for sure. It's hard to pick favorites, but do you have a favorite or one that you're most proud of creating? I have yep. a feeling we have the same favorite, but we'll see. Face Hero. Face Hero. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Face of Hero. Of course, Face Hero. Of course. Um, and I've got a second, which is a lesser known product, but Face Hero for sure. And Face Hero for me is um, really symbolic of the brand on a whole because I was a very, very devoted rosehip oil user for a long, long time and wanted to develop a oil that was much better than rosehip oil, offered a lot more benefits in terms of antioxidants and essential fatty acids and so on. So that came about because it was an existing category that I thought we could do better, and we did. And when that came out in 2015, it became an instant bestseller, and I think we sell one every two minutes. Mm -hmm. It has helped in numerous people with their skin problems. It's like a hug in a bottle. It's our gateway product. It brings a lot of people into the brand. It informed grow to because I was using it on my children's rashy skin and mm -hmm. then that I developed Skin Wizard from that. So it's just one of these sort of beautiful, iconic, this is what we stand for. We'll look after your skin, but we'll actually do something as well. Everybody can use it and it makes you feel good and happy to use it. Yeah. Yeah. It's go-to in a bottle. Oh, it is. My second favourite is the Removalist, which no one thinks of, but it's such an incredible clay mask because it's, I used it before this. Mm -hmm. um, it's I, used very... it last, I used it last night. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> and, and no one's talking about how good it is. So it, it's really good at drawing out impurities, but it also brightens and hydrates. <laughs> well, I've got to get back to work. <laughs> so um, before I... Uh, fire up these Bunsen burners. No, I, look, we just want to say thank you for being with us here today. If there's one thing you take away from what we do here at GoTo and how you can best explain our brand to the customer, it is that we are there for them. We are there to look after their skin, to make them feel confident, to make them feel like it's easy, they can trust GoTo to care for them while getting some very clinically proven and very serious results in a really gentle and nurturing way. Yeah.